Distinguished colleagues, staff is the nominee for Oyo State, Mr. Sunday Akindare. Mr. Akindare, you are welcome to the Senate Chambers on behalf of all my colleagues here. We welcome you. Thank you. Yeah. We are a receipt of your CV and all the details that you can still highlight on those that you feel are so important for this uh, exercise. And in fact, you could also add if there is anything missing or left out but you feel it's important for this exercise. Well, once again, you are welcome, and you can address the Senate. Thank you. Senator Ahmed Lawa. The Deputy Distinguished Senate uh, Deputy Senate President, Senator Omagege. Most Distinguished Senators in this hallowed chamber this afternoon and indeed my distinguished senators from the state of Oyo Oyo Agbewao let me start by putting forward my appreciation for this opportunity to stand before this very important assembly the Nigerian Senate, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me also equally, with all modesty, thank the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari GCFR, for counting me worthy to be a ministerial nominee in a country of 193 million with talented people. I thank you for this opportunity. And once again, my name, my names are Sunday Akin Dare from Obumasho, Oyo State. In 2016, I had the privilege and opportunity to be screened by a committee from this Senate for the position of the Executive Commissioner Stakeholder Management of Nigerian Communications Commission. And two and a half years down the road, I've had the great opportunity and privilege to serve this country in that capacity of managing the telecommunications sector of our economy. A sector that has been very dynamic in growing our GDP from 9.1 when I joined to 10.1 as we speak. I've had the opportunity to help work with different critical stakeholders to make sure that telecommunication serves as a tool for national development, particularly in the area of digitization. So today, I stand before you. I finished from the Baptist High School in Joss. I proceeded there, from there to the Oyo State College of Arts and Science, Oscars Ileife, for my advanced level studies in geography, government, and history. Thereafter, I proceeded to the Amadou Bello University Zaria to read international studies. Thereafter, I proceeded to the University of Joss, where I earned a master's degree in international law and diplomacy. Still on the academics, I had the opportunity of being selected as a visiting journalism scholar to the New York University, NYU, in New York, 
And then in the year 2000, I was selected as a Neiman Fellow at the Harvard University for a one-year academic study. And finally, in 2010-2011, I won another fellowship award to do conduct academic research in residence at the Oxford University in the United Kingdom. At the professional level, I've had a stint for almost 25 years as a journalist and a writer. I worked with the news magazine and Tempo, after which I moved on to work at The Voice of America in Washington, D.C., where I served for nine years as the chief or director of the House Service of The Voice of America, where we broadcast to about 45 million House speakers across the West African sub-region. If you permit me, I want to step back and talk a bit about my work as a journalist, particularly with the News and Temple magazine, where I rose to become the general editor. It was a period in which constitutional democracy was suspended in this country. It was a period in which the parliament, as important as it is, fulcrum of democracy, where you now sit, was also suspended. And I, I along with members of the civil society, played a critical role in fighting for the return of civil democracy and constitutional rule to Nigeria. At the risk of our lives, our limbs, and I'm sure there are some members, distinguished members of this Alo Chamber today, who are part of either NADECO, the civil society, or the pro-democracy group that joined to make sure that we enjoyed the fruit of democracy as it is today. I will move quickly to just speak briefly about my work at the NCC. We live in an era of digitization in which every aspect of our lives is now being digitalized. We leverage on critical telecommunications infrastructure and technology under IT, as we call it in the industry, ICT when it comes to education. We have e-commerce, e-medicine, and the NCC, as the regulator, plays a key role in making sure that national development in all sectors in this country is accelerated and advanced by leveraging on digital platforms. I have been a champion, and I continue to champion, the need to leverage telecommunications platform and technology for national development. We have seen how it has contributed to the GDP of countries around the world, from North America to Europe. In Nigeria, we have statistics that testify to this. From 9.1, some three years back, we're at 10.1 right now. We have seen that the more we have the penetration of broadband, the more we empower our startups, the more we can empower our youth to be self-employed. They can develop content, leveraging on the web.20 as we have it. At the NCC, we have seen a regulator that has leveraged regulatory excellence for national development. So we talk about regulation for development, not regulation for the sake of it, not regulation that is over regulation, but rather regulation that is fastidious, regulation that is consistent, regulation that seeks to advance the growth of this country in all sectors. We are not there yet. We want to improve quality of service. We want broadband access to go through every home, which is the last mile. We are now at 33 percent. We have a goal of reaching 70 percent in two years. We want fiber optic connection to reach 774 local governments across the country. We want a more efficient use of our spectrum resources in this country. Above all, we want to place this country on the path of being able to enjoy the 5G, which is just around the corner, that will give us the fastest connection speed ever, that will enhance and deepen business growth and development, that will 
enhance e-government and e-governance as the case may be. I've been privileged to be at the center of a pivotal industry, a dynamic industry, which has pervaded all of our, of our lives from 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G. Once again, my CV is before you, distinguished senators. I would like to stop here and listen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for the presentation. Uh, distinguished colleagues, let me take the opportunity to ask the first question. One of our colleagues here, Senator Abulu Semos, in, uh, about two weeks ago, when we were discussing insecurity, especially kidnappings in the country, said that um, we can address this problem, especially kidnapping, where the kidnappers negotiate ransom with their funds, and yet neither in time to rescue people how, because you are, you are still, I think, a commissioner in NCC, tell the Senate how the cooperation of these agencies with the NCC will ensure that kidnappers are arrested and appropriate action taken. Essentially, how can we really get to the kidnappers while they are using these phones? He's a ministerial nominee from uh, your state. Still, he's still the executive, one of the three executive commissioners uh, in NCC, an accomplished author, a very cerebral. Uh, Mr. President, unlike other states, we will be asking for this man to bar and go. We want to showcase our contribution to the Federal Executive Council. And I want to thank you for uh, asking the first question. I would also like to ask him a question, Mr. President. Uh, you, you talked about this broadband, but we know it isn't working the way you make it sound. Could you tell us what the issues are, what the challenges are? Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, in 1991, when Sunday was doing his first degree in Amadou Bello University, I was doing my master's. I was just in front of the bar one day, SUV, and he came and he said, Egbon, he said, You are from Oboma Shop. I was meeting him for the first time at that time. I said, Yes. Since that time, up to date, he has maintained a very good relationship with me. Before that time, along the line, they went on exile, and he was always calling from Washington to find out that what is happening at home politically. So, look, things are moving on well. When we are we're now moving to democracy, when they came back from their exile, we maintained that relationship. In 2016, when he was being screened at this place for NCC, I was chairing the ICT committee. Olam Lekan was the deputy uh, chairman for communication. We went for the screening, and that day, myself and Olam Lekan, we now stood there for him that, look, we can assure you that he will do his best to the communication industry. Within that two years and now, he was able to produce this book, Regulating Telecommunication for, Niger for National Development. And those who are part of the team, we ask him at that time that, look, what will be your contribution, how the way they are using telecommunication as a higher revenue generation for the country. He said at that time that, look, if people can give us the enabling law 
who will be able to amend, if you are able to amend the, the, the law, the current law, who will be able to increase the revenue that is coming. And I'm happy when he was introducing himself, he said something like that. My colleague, I'm appealing to you. I'm presenting Sunday Diary as a nominee. And uh, I, we are not saying you should take it out. We even want him to show the experience and the pain he had so that people can appreciate the stuff we are putting. Thank you very much. <laughs> the DSP. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chairman. First, I want to thank Mr. President for this nomination. This nominee is a nominee that we add value to the Federal Executive Council. I have no doubt whatsoever. I stand today to honor your service and your contributions to this country. Both while in exile, in your fight for restoration of democracy, and the services you've rendered since you came into governance. I honor you for all of that. Now, my question. You served in the NCC. The first question that was asked of you by Mr. President was a question I was going to ask. But I haven't been asked. I want to follow up on that by asking you if you feel that the sanctions and the penalty regime as contained in the NCC Act is sufficient to deal with issues arising from non-registration of SIM cards, because that is the trust of the problem we have today where you have people using uh, phones with SIM cards that are not registered to commit these crimes, not just banditry, but uh, kidnapping and what have you. Uh, in your service in NCC, did you try to seek the enforcement of the penalty and of the sanctions regime as therein contained? Or did you at any time consider those sanctions regime inadequate? And if inadequate, would you be recommending, what would you be recommending as a more effective sanctions regime in the event you find yourself as Minister of Communications? That would be my question. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I rise to join my brothers from Oyo State to congratulate our brother, Mr. Sunday Akindari, for this opportunity for him to serve as a Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, we have a saying in your state. Please permit me to say it first in Yoruba, then I will tell you what it is in English. We say, Aji Shebi Oyo Lauri, Oyo Shebi Eni Konko. In other words, in other words, Oyo is a peace setter state. When my colleagues were, were uh, making their submission, they said we are not interested in bowing and going because we have a young man who we are sure will not only represent our state adequately, will represent Nigeria wherever, whatever portfolio is given by Mr. President. As you can see from his CV, is a scholar, is cerebral, is intelligent, is educated. Uh, Mr. President, with all this, 
I'm sure that Mr. President is simply putting a round peg in a round hole. But now I have a question for you. Now that the country is trying to move from a resource-based economy to knowledge-based economy, what would you be suggesting to Mr. President as a way for us to move as a nation from a, from a resource-based economy to a knowledge-based economy, given your background and your skill as an IT expert? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Important and critical question, timely in every sense of the word to pose right now, not just to the uh, NCC as a regulator of the telecommunications industry, but also to our country's security agencies. The issue of kidnapping worries us, not just as regulators, but also as citizens of this country. And we have watched across the country how we have seen a spike in the level of kidnapping. The starting point really is that to arrest kidnapping, it is a collaborative effort. Because NCC as a regulator, without making any excuses, does not have prosecutorial powers. But we do have what we call the same registration database, a database inclusive of 172 million subscribers in this country. It is expected to have every SIM card registered with the necessary information and data, biometrics, as the case may be. The process works in such a way that the operators collect this information, they pass them on to the regulator, and we begin a process of verification or scrubbing. Because very often we have found that the biometrics are not done properly, the information certain fields are missing, and in most cases we found that the pictures used are either very fuzzy, they are not clear. So we have been able to work on that process. In the last three years we have worked with NIMSI. They have the equipment and the software to scrub this data and get them back to the NCC. This is still ongoing. We have done well over 50 million, and the process is a bit tedious because it's dealing with technology, but it's been speeded up. But it is important to make the point that we have captured at least 85% of every SIM card in this country in terms of registration. In terms of connection, every SIM card in use is connected to the network. So yes, it is possible to trace the kidnappers, but until kidnapping occurs, until that phone call is made, there's no real-time surveillance. There's no software to be able to monitor 172 million uh, lines around the clock. What we have had, distinguished Senate President and distinguished senators, true collaborative effort with the Office of the ONSA, the DSS, and the police. We have had telephone numbers brought to our attention immediately. NCC had gone ahead on several locations to query the database we have and the database the MNOs have, like MTN, GLOW, and we've been able to extract the needed information, pass the information in real time to the DSS, and the security agencies, and we have had several apprehensions. People have been arrested. It is difficult for me to disclose the process of triangulation and the other processes that the ONSA and the rest really go through. But I know that we are working towards creating a more robust system, leveraging on technology. We have a number of proof of concepts because we're trying to benchmark and see what other countries I've, I've done in order to, to reduce uh, the crime of uh, kidnapping as we have it in our country. And I think the most si significant uh, 
step in that direction is the attempt to create a national citizens database. All the reporting data gathering agencies have been directed by the Federal Executive Council to submit all of their data to NIMSI. And NIMSI will go through, provide every Nigerian with a NIN, as the case may be, update their fingerprint biometrics called 442. And once we have that together, any Nigerian, we can simply query that database. Your telephone number will be there, the house address will be there, and be able to locate. So, distinguished Senator President, the NCC is working actively and collaboratively with the Office of National Security Advisor, the DSS, and the police. But the details of this, I cannot disclose. But NCC, on its part, is working to sanitize the SIM card registration. And distinguished uh, Deputy Senate President, I think this ties into your question. So I take your question along with it. The SIM card, pre-SIM card menace. We've had several arrests across the country, in Kano, in Sokoto. We are gaining on them to the extent that we've leveraged a lot of sanctions on the telcos. We don't do name and shame as we had in the case of the MTN. But as we speak, there's an ongoing audit of all the MNOs, almost a repeat of what happened in 2015 that led to the 300 billion naira fine. We have three tax forces in Lagos, and in another two weeks, they will come back with detailed findings. We will know the operators that have given us SIM cards that have not been properly registered. Distinguished Senator Teslim Folarin, thank you very much for your question on broadband. what we want to call a broadband challenge. And the federal government, under the leadership of President Mohamed Buhari, came up with the National Broadband Plan, which had been in the works. But because the government has created a very suitable environment for telecom regulation, the target for the broadband plan was to have, by 2018, 30% broadband penetration. That is, to the last mile. As at the end of 2018, NCC was able to exceed, not was able to meet that target, but also exceeded by 3.1. We ran it up the year with 33.1% broadband penetration. But are we there yet? We're not there yet. The goal is to get to 70% broadband penetration. Right now, 65 million Nigerians have broadband out of 192 million. And the NCC, in order to make sure that we accelerate broadband penetration, because right now we have capacity at our shores, Main One, Glow One, Sat One. The NCC is investing in building broadband infrastructure, the backbone that will take this capacity to 774 local government. Each local government will have fiber optic laid with a point of access, POA. And that is just beginning a process of digitization. So broadband is important. The NCC also licensed seven infraco companies. These are infrastructure companies that we lay fiber optic of about 291,000 kilometers across the country. It's been determined that we need a minimum of 310,000 kilometers of fiber optic to be able to provide that last mile connectivity to Nigerians. And these infraco companies are licensed on a regional basis, the six uh, geopolitical regions in the country. And Lagos got a separate license because clearly it is the telecom headquarters of our country. And let me just say quickly on broadband. We have also created a more efficient use of spectrum. We have created a spectrum market where you can lease or you can trade your spectrum. Right now we have a lot of portfolio spectrum. Those that have received our licenses, they paid for the spectrum but they're not using it for the purposes needed. 
So we created this market. Agitation for this has been going on for almost 10 years in the industry. But under the, the government of President Mohamed Buhari, because of the massive support we have received, we've been able to start the spectrum trading market uh, late last year. Let me go to Senator, distinguished Senator Abdul Fattah Buhari. Uh, I thank you for your, your kind words. Um, I thank you for your nostalgic recollection. And I recall that when um, a committee from this distinguished Senate graciously cleared me in 2016 to be an executive commissioner, that was one of the questions posed. What will you do differently? And I stand, as I stand before you today, I can say the NCC as a regulator has recorded successes on behalf of this country in areas that has placed Nigeria ahead of several other comparative countries in the sub-region. Nigeria is clearly on the path of digitization. We have been able to advance or deepen the investment in the telecom industry to 70 billion plus. We have been able to dollars, US dollars. We've been able to increase the contribution of the telecom industry to the GDP from 9.1 in 2015 to 10.1 the first quarter of 2019. We've been able to increase from the days of NITA when we started with 500,000 or thereabout lines. In the last three years, we've moved from 115,000 subscriber line to 172,000, 172 million, sorry, 172 million subscribers in this country. That's deep in telephoning because these people buy data, they leverage on the OTT over the top technology like WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram. The price of data has also come down comparatively. So for one gig of data going for just about a thousand naira, most Nigerians can afford to buy data and also do a lot of things with their data. We have set targets for ourselves in NCC. We're working, striving to do better because there's still a lot to do. And I think the most important is that as stakeholder, as a stakeholder manager, I've been able to work very closely with the critical stakeholders, which includes this particular assembly from the MDAs to the consumer, which is the king, to members of the security, to states and local government, I've been able to deepen relationship, solve problems, but also work with the operators in the aspect of enhancing their capacity, particularly so that we can improve quality of service. Distinguished Deputy Senate President, I think I've taken your question. I will now take the question from Senator, Distinguished Senator Kola Balogun. Knowledge-based economy. You are absolutely right. We live in an era of knowledge-based economy. And the talk is often made about what is the new oil? Data is the new oil. It's almost virtually impossible to do anything without connectivity, without data. We're so dependent on data now, and we have seen how we have a 17 billion US dollar investment alone in this industry. The answer here is with the support of the government, which the NCC is expecting. If 
NCC as a regulator gets the subsidy that is needed to support the infrastructure company that will bring the capacity, the capacity we have lying down on our shores to build a national backbone across the country, a network that will make a difference for our universities, for our industries, for our corporations, that will make a difference. Thank you very much. Before I call for the next uh, set of questions, um, covering the details, because I have a list of over 20 senators who would like to ask questions. So the next set will be Senator Adiola Salomon Olamilekon, Senator Gabro Soswam, the deputy leader and the chief whip in that order. Mimi, who is a brother, a friend, and a very close associate of over 20 years. Mr. President, Mr. Sondi Akindari has been nominated by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as one of those that should assist the President in carrying out his duty. Mr. President, as the earlier speakers have said, the contribution of Mr. Sunday Dari towards the nation building over the years has been well spent in his CV that we have before us. But, sir, we have decided to keep him here so that we can ask some questions bordering on the nation communication sector. I could recollect that the first few motions that was taken by this night Senate borders and centers around communication sector. And having you here today, you are standing from two fronts. One, we are screening you, and two, to provide answers to, for, uh, to some of the challenges that we have in the communication sector. So, along that line, I will ask these two questions. Number one, on the area of cybercrime, you will quite agree with me that there is a rise in cyber, cyber internet fraud as far as Nigeria is concerned. And there was a motion that was moved on the floor of the Senate that centers around this. What is your views and what is NCC doing along this line? Number two, in the area of call drop, where Nigerians have been paying unduly for services that were not given to them. Unwarranted messages by the telcos and money being deducted from time to time. What are the actions taken by the National Communications Commission regarding this major issue? Once more, I want to congratulate you in advance. These are my questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I want to appreciate uh, the Senators from Oyo for having a good product and not being ashamed to showcase it. Akin, let me take you a little bit out of your comfort zone, but an area that based on your CV, I believe you have the competence to address, as you have addressed competently, the telecommunications sector. You, as a student of international relations, you will agree with me that in the 70s and 80s, Nigeria had a foreign policy trust. In the 70s, it was to assist African nations that were still under colonialism to be emancipated. And Nigeria played a very active role in doing that. But at the advent of this current democracy, 
President Obasanjo started or rather focused on a different area of foreign policy. That was to attract foreign investment into our country and remove us from the paria statute that we had enjoyed for some time. Uh, Akin, as a student of foreign policy, will you tell Nigerians and these Halo Chambers whether Nigeria still has any foreign policy? And if your answer is that Nigeria has a foreign policy, will you agree that it has become a candidate for change? And if your answer is no, what would you, based on your uh, CV here, if the President decides to post you as Foreign Minister, and your answer is no, what would you propose to the President to constitute, or rather our focus as a nation, to be our foreign policy? I say this because uh, about two weeks ago, uh, <coughs> the Senate President invited us for a courtesy court that was attended by the South African Ambassador. And I had had cause to admonish the Ambassador because of the maltreatment of Nigerians in South Africa. We have had this case in other countries as well. Now, we seem not to be responding because there is no concise foreign policy that would address these issues. Now, I've asked the two, I've, uh, that is the first question. The second one is, the second one, Mr. President, is that you know that the same telecommunication is closely related to foreign policies of other countries. You know that the fight between America and China is about Huawei. And so, as a telecom expert, based on your answers here, how will you link our foreign policy to the telecommunication that we are discussing here. Mr. President, these are my two questions. Modern telecommunication depends on two major backbones. Satellite backbone and the fiber optics. And I think Nigeria has op opted for fiber optics. And in order to obtain the the 87 or the 97 penetration you are talking about, you have a very massive plan to lay kilometers, thousands of kilometers of fiber optics across the country. My concern, like the oil pipeline, where the right of way for the pipeline has not been well defined, which leads to damaging the oil pipelines, is there any law put in place by NCC to guarantee the right of way for fiber optics laid across the country? Because once you damage the fiber optics at a particular point, it affects the large area. So this is my concern, and I want to find out whether you have any plan whether NCC has any plan or any law guaranteeing this uh, uh, right of way for fiber optics laid across the country. At the time when you drive from Lagos to Abuja, you see some of those fiber optics by the roadside being damaged. So this is the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Not. Mr. Anomini, congratulations for your appointment. Thank you. I have known you for possibly 1995, 96, and uh, you're a very loyal fellow. When you were in Washington, I recommended you to the other, the Minister of Information, Mrs. Akunyere, to hire you and bring you back home. And my question is very simple. How will all these multi-billion communication companies go public so Nigeria masses will benefit 
from the huge profit being rolled out every year. Because in other countries, all the companies that are in communication are public quoted. It's only in Nigeria, even MTN that have listed. They only listed to uh, existing shareholders. They have not gone full public. How will how will um, they have gone public, but they didn't allow the smaller people to buy. The, the rights have not been issued properly. How would they ask them? They, they went public, they are not available. You are right. So how will other telecommunication companies go public? So Nigerian people on the streets who are paying money to them can also get dividends every year. Secondly, if Mr. President decide to put you a Minister of Information, how will you improve the media owners, their relationship with government? And because now the relationship of media owners, media owners are not getting any subsidy from government. There's only business. They are not getting business. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Order. Yes, manager, order. How will you be able to get media owners to get um, some concession in their import like newsprint, ink, and all the rest of them? Because it is very, very, very important. The media is dying. And people, yes, it's not complete of interest. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Changes in the telecommunications industry are like no other. We have these challenges in this country. Several other countries have similar challenges. But how are we meeting or how have we met these challenges? I think the major challenge we have really is that of telecommunications infrastructure. We do not have the level of telecommunications infrastructure that we need. And I will just give one single example. This country needs at least 180,000 BTSs, base transceiver stations. These are the long masts you see. We only have about 44,000 BTSs. That is an acute shortage of infrastructure. If we are able to ramp up the number of BTS we have across the country, connectivity will, in, will improve, business transaction will improve, startups where we have a lot of youth will also benefit massively. And you talked about cybercrime. Why cybercrime, fighting cybercrime, is largely the statutorily the work of NITDA. The NCC, working with NITDA, also plays a role in monitoring cybercrime. As we speak now, the cybercrime law enacted in 2014, in the twilight of the administration, of the last administration, before APC came in, is now domiciled in the office of the National Security Advisor. So it's still a collaborative effort with NIDA taking the statutory, with UNSA because it borders on security. You talked about drop calls. Yes, drop calls focuses on the quality of service. We have a benchmark for drop calls. That is, out of every 100 calls, at least 99 of those calls must go through. Yes, it's true. We still have drop calls back and forth. But we also have KPIs, key performance factors that we use. One of them, there are four of them actually, the call setup success rate, the Mr. channel Pre congestion. Mr. President, sir, he has two more minutes to go. And NCC 
holds the operators to meeting these KPIs on a quarterly basis. And where an operator has fallen short, we have sanctioned them on a continuous basis. Comparatively, we have seen improvements when compared with other regulatory crimes in Ghana, in Kenya, but I think we can do better. It is a process, and NCC is doing all within its powers to make sure that the quality of service and the quality of experience of every subscriber in this country uh, is such that it is acceptable and according to global standards. The unsolicited calls we have. In 2017, the NCC dedicated one year campaign to making sure that we fight against unsolicited calls. We introduced the Do Not Disturb, introduced a short code 2442, and all any subscriber had to do was activate the 2442 and it stops any unsolicited messages coming to your phone. The second question, I'll take it very briefly. Uh, distinguished Senator Gabriel, thank you for your question uh, on foreign policy. Yes, indeed. You outlined the trajectory that we have had over time. We also had a period of concentric circle, as the case may be. We had that of foreign direct investment, as the case may be. But let me say, any country's foreign policy is driven largely by the internal values of that country that is projected outside. And I think the starting point for the conception and the implementation of any new foreign policy as it is. With all the elements we've had in the past, they're still important. Foreign direct investment is important. Helping our neighbors as the most populous country in Africa is important. Serving as the leader of Africa is important. But also, improving our internal values will be critical towards developing a, a robust foreign policy. And I think we have seen this government trying to make sure that at a reputational level, Nigerians earn a lot of respect. <clears throat> Let me take the question by <clears throat> distinguished Senator Boroughface. Fiber optic. Yes, fiber cuts are one of our biggest problems in this country because of digging. Yes. So we have the open access model in which we have a single duct. <clears throat> Instead of MNOs digging five places, you come under the open access model with a single pipe and you can put the yellow, the blue, the red, and that reduces uh, the ducts that you have to use. Finally, distinguished Senator Ojikalu, I thank you for your question. And I will just take the last part of your question if I'm allowed to do that. I think that the firewall between the media and the government is important because it speaks to the independence of the media. The democracy we enjoy today is because the media has protected its independence very jealously. If the government provides subsidy, gives waivers, I think a part of that independence will be taken away. But I do agree, the media industry is under great stress because of the cost of newsprint. The appeal would be to the central bank to provide a forex window at an exchange rate that softens the ground for the newspaper industry to bring in the much needed materials for their production. Thank you very much. Distinguished uh, colleagues, we are stopping at 6 o'clock and we have two more nominees to go. So is it the wish of the Senate that the nominee takes a bow and go? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. You can take a bow. Thank you.